Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. It's none other than who? Your girl cooking with Tammy and I am back in the building with another great recipe. Talk about another banger. Yes, today we are going to be making a seafood gumbo. And let me tell you something, this seafood gumbo is going to be packed with tons of seafood as you can see and it's going to be packed with tons of flavor. So with all of that being said, let's introduce these ingredients and get started. First thing on our ingredient list is our base scallops. We also have our crab claws. Yes, we do. Not to mention we have the blue crab in the house, sitting back there literally just chilling on ice. And we also have our crawfish, look at how beautiful. Not to mention we have our langostino lobster, as well as our jumbo shrimp. Mm -hmm. Now tell me if that right there is not going to be something else. As far as our other ingredients, we have our Cajun seasoning as well as our onion powder, our Worcestershire sauce. Yes, we do. We have the saucy sauce. We also have some dried thyme and onion powder, our minced garlic, finely chopped onions, as well as some finely chopped bell peppers, both red and green, finely chopped celery, as well as okra. And let's see, we have our green onions. Yes, we do. We also have our all-purpose flour. We're not using self-rising flour, but we're gonna be using all-purpose flour, as well as our oil, bay leaves, and we have our stock. Yes, we do. For the broth, we're gonna be using, let's see, chicken broth, but you're making seafood gumbo. Trust me, it's gonna balance out the flavors. We're also gonna be using our seafood broth as well, not to mention we have our gumbo filet sitting in the back, and we have our lager. Yes, we do. We have our beer. Now, if you don't drink beer, no problem. All you're going to do is what? Omit it from the recipe. And last but not least, we have our Andouille sausage link. Yes, we do. So with all of that being said, it's about that time. Let's get to cooking. First thing we're going to do is we are going to cook our Andouille sausages. So to this cast iron skillet right here, we're going to add a little avocado oil just like that. Not too much. We're working with pork Andouille sausages. And guess what? Pork makes its own oil. So we don't need to get carried away with adding the oil. However, if you are going to do turkey sausages or any type of different meat, whether it be chicken and dewy, of course, you're going to add your oil to your pan. Just going to add it in there. Spread it out just a bit. And we are going to allow these sausages to brown up. Adding the sausages is going to create so many depths of flavor when it comes to making our seafood gumbo. We're going to fry these bad boys up on medium-high heat. Once they are nice and brown, we're going to flip it on over, allow it to brown on the other side as well. Our sausages are nice and brown, so we're going to take it out of the pot, and we're going to place it into this bowl right here, and we are going to set it aside till later. However, if I were you, I would at least take about one to two pieces because, of course, the sausage is looking this good. It's definitely hard to resist. At this point in time, we are going to adjust our flame. We're going to turn that flame down to low heat. Using the same preheated pot, we're going to start off with adding some oil. And once we're done, we're going to add our flour. However, we're not going to get carried away, guys, and add all of the flour at one time. No, we're going to end up with a big old clumpy mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our flour in small portions while continuously stirring. We're just going to keep stirring and we're going to keep stirring until our arms fall off. Now I'm just playing. But for this part, listen, if you're not in shape, your arms will be in shape definitely after this process because we're gonna be continuously stirring for about 40 minutes. What we're trying to achieve is a nice dark chocolatey roux. And in order to do so with a nice smooth consistency and texture, we have to add that small amount of flour. And as I mentioned before, our flame has to be on low heat. And as you can see, I'm taking the back of my spatula and I'm getting all of those little lumps out of the flour because we want that nice smooth texture. In the meanwhile, we're gonna keep stirring and I'm gonna show you what it looks like after 10 minutes. Are you guys still hanging in there with me? I hope you are because right now we have achieved a nice golden brown color. At this point in time, your house should have like a nice nutty flavor type of scent going on. And that is a perfect indication that you're doing everything correctly. So what we're gonna do is, because like I said before, and I'm gonna say it again, we're trying to go for that dark chocolate color. So we still got some more mixing to do, but the main point is we're getting there slowly but surely. So with that being said, continue stirring. Quick and easy tip, of course, I gotta hit you with the tips. As you can see, I'm taking my spatula and I'm going in circular motions, and every now and then, I go back and forth with the spatula. 
back and forth. And that's only because, like I said, I want it to be ironed out really smoothly. I want to make sure I get every part of this roux well combined. So that's why we're going to go in circular motions. And I find that it works best to also go back and forth. Woohoo! We are now at the finish line. Yes, it's been 40 minutes. And I gotta be honest, the 40 minutes went by really quickly. This is what we are trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve this color right here. This is absolutely it, all right? So with that being said, it's time for us to start adding our other ingredients. We're gonna start off with adding our onions and we wanna add everything with caution because let me tell you, this thing right here is so hot. We're gonna cook our onions for about three to five minutes. We're trying to get all of the aromatics to be released and we're also trying to get them to soften just a bit. So about three to five minutes would do these onions perfect. Once we're done, we're gonna go in and we're gonna add our bell peppers while continuously stirring as well, followed by our finely chopped celery. And of course, we're gonna combine everything. At this point in time, you have to admit this is absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna add our minced garlic to the mix while continuously stirring. Yes, you're not off the hook just yet. You gotta keep stirring. And once those aromatics from the garlic is released, we're gonna move on to the next step. Since we've been working so hard, it's time for us to repay ourselves, yes. So it's up to you if you wanna put all this right here in the pot or if you wanna sit back and sip on some before or after. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna add some of our beer, some of our lager, just like that, about 12 ounces is perfect. And we're gonna stir it on up, yes. And this is only gonna contribute to the flavors. Yes, it is. We're gonna add a little bit more. Uh -huh. Loosen it up just a bit. Suddenly the color goes from dark chocolate to like milk chocolate, right? You realize that? And if you look, remember we had that little crustification that was going on right there? Guess what? Where is it? Where is it? It is out of here because the liquid deglazed the bottom of the pot. So that's a great thing. At this time, we're going to add our stock. We're going to go in with our seafood stock first, followed by our chicken stock. And at this point in time, increase the flame, allow it to come to a slow simmer. And I'm going to show you what to do next. This is what we're going for. We're gonna start off with adding our Cajun seasoning. Add it in there, we gotta season this stuff up. We're also gonna add our garlic powder, our onion powder, add it in there. I don't care if it's non-traditional, we gotta spice things up. We're also gonna add our dried thyme, as well as our bay leaves, of course. Our Worcestershire sauce, our saucy sauce, guys, yes! <laughs> and we're gonna give it a good mix time for the fun part we're gonna add our sausages into the pot just like that now we're gonna scrape out all of those juices and stuff mm -hmm. and it's gonna give it nice flavor we're gonna give it a good stir we're gonna lower our flame just a bit because we want it to come to a slow simmer and we're gonna cover it on down with the cover and we're gonna allow it to do its thing for about an hour to an hour and a half but even though we're going to allow it to do its thing for an hour to an hour and a half, here's the thing. You're not going to go and get lost somewhere and come back after an hour and a half or an hour. What you need to do is you're going to continuously check periodically, It maybe every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes to make sure everything is going good. Maybe you might want to give it a little stir once or twice. So we're going to cover it on down and we'll be right back. It's been about an hour and a half so far. And take a look. This looks so gorgeous what looks absolutely beautiful all right what we're going to do next is we are going to add our our seafood however we're only going to add some of our shellfish we're not going to add the shrimp the shrimp is going to go in the last only because it cooks really fast we're going to start off with adding our crab claws I can't wait for the sauce to get like literally embedded into the crab claws. It's gonna be so good. OMG. All right, we're also gonna add our blue crabs to the mix. Get it all in there. Mm-hmm. 
push it on down, push it on down. Mm, mm, mm. I know you guys, I know your mouth is salivating. And we're gonna add our crawfish. This meal is not only gonna taste great, but we're gonna have that nice pop of color going on. Now would be the perfect time to get that rice boiling. Get that rice on the stove top because once this gumbo is done, you're gonna wanna eat, trust me. At this time, we're gonna add our base scallops. Add my langostino lobster as well. Get it down deep in the pot. Mm -hmm. And we're also gonna add our jumbo shrimp. In no time at all, our shrimp as well as our base scallops and our langostino lobster is gonna be cooked. As you can see, the blue crabs, they turn red and that's the indication that they're cooked all the way through. And the same thing is gonna take place when it comes to the shrimp as well. Uh, in regards to the scallops, if you do decide to use scallops, they're gonna firm up just a bit because right now they're like really soft and mushy. And yeah, that's pretty much the indication that tells you that your seafood is cooked. So I'm gonna allow it to do what it do for about five minutes and then we're gonna add some more ingredients. I'm telling you, this gumbo, it's a lot of work, but it's so worth it. Where's my okra lovers out there? We're gonna add some green onions as well. Give it some extra flavor. And that perfect contrast of color. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go in there with some fresh green leaf parsley. And we're gonna add it to our pot. Yes, we are. This is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we're going to add a little bit of our gumbo filet. What's gumbo filet, you ask? Gumbo filet is from the sassafras leaf. What they do is they take the leaf and they basically just pound it up until it turns into a powder. And what it does is it gives our gumbo a nice, exotic, distinct taste or flavor. And it works as a great thickening agent as well. So, yeah, yeah. We're going to let it go for about another five minutes. And we are going to serve it up. Let's get the seafood gumbo served on up. Mm hmm. I know you're like, you're not saying anything much. When you're done with perfection on a plate, there's really nothing much to say. <laughs> Just take it on in, take it on in. Let's get some shrimp as well. We didn't add the shrimp to the pot for no reason, right? Let's get some blue crab in there. Mm -hmm. Let's take it like this, that's perfect. Let's clean this plate up just a bit. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm, mm, mm. And guess what? It tastes even better. Hey, we're going to go in and we're going to take this bowl out of here. Just like that. And voila! What? <laughs> Absolutely gorge. Did you guys know what was sitting under the bowl? Another piece of crawfish right there. And another piece of shrimp. And you know what? Let's hit that rice off with just a little. You know what? I'm going to hit it off with something else. Let's see what we can do right there. I'm going to take one of our blue crabs and I'm going to put it on top just like that. Whoa. And we're going to hit it off with just a little bit of green parsley for garnish. And that is it. If that's not a seafood gumbo, I don't know what is. That right there is everything. Just being able to create this recipe in the comfort of your own house speaks volumes, definitely. Not to mention the flavors. Ooh, <laughs> just talking about it, I'm salivating. Mm -mm -mm. Make this recipe right here and I guarantee you, 
you'll be number one in like literally in your house at your church at any event you definitely be number one because this recipe right here is no joke As always i'm your girl cooking with tammy it's been a lot of fun i would catch you guys in another video i'll talk to you later bye guys enjoy